In this video, we learn the basic concepts of the Python programming language. We assume that you are already familiar with some other imperative programming language, for example C++, C, Java, JavaScript, or Rust. Let's start with math. Python is the best pocket calculator that you ever had. You can do basic math in Python, like adding, subtracting, or multiplying numbers. Division is a bit more complicated. You can use a double slash for computing the integer division. If you want to know the remainder of the integer division, Python uses the percentage symbol. This is also known as a modulo computation. The single slash symbol does a real division that produces a decimal number. Python uses the double equal sign to test for equality. But you need to be careful. As in most other programming languages, Python does not compute arbitrarily accurately with decimal numbers. For example, 3 times 0.1 is not exactly the same as 0.3. The Python calculator can also use variables. Here we assign the result of 2 to the power of 100 to the variable x. We can show the content of variable x using the print command of Python. Note that 2 to the power of 100 is a really large number. Most programming languages cannot handle such numbers, but Python can work with arbitrarily large numbers. Python is also excellent at handling strings. We first assign a string to the variable s. In Python, we do not have to define that the variable has the type string. We can simply make assignments. Using the built-in Python function, len, we get the length of the string. We can access individual letters of the string. Like in most other programming languages, the first letter of the string is at position 0. We use the square brackets to access different parts of the string. The last letter of a string is at position len of s-1, or simply at position minus 1. We can also get a substring of s by slicing the string. If we ask for the slice 1 colon 3, then we get the substring from position 1 to position 3. Note that position 3 is not included itself. So that's the substring bc. If we add another colon, we can even add jumps. In this example, we want all the letters starting at position 3, until the end, but only every second letter. So that gives the string df. We don't have to specify all the elements of a slice. The slice colon colon minus 1 simply reads the string backwards, from end to start. In Python, lists are almost the same as strings. We can build lists with square brackets. Like in strings, we find the element at position 2 in the list x by using the square brackets. We can use the built-in range function to build simple lists. Range of 5 builds a list with the values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, again starting at 0 and not including 5 itself. To make this range an actual list, we just use the list keyword. But Python has a cool way to construct advanced lists. This is known as list comprehension. Here, we build a list by letting a helper variable, i, produce all the numbers from 1 to 6, starting at 1, and not including 6. But instead of just putting variable i in the respective position at the list, we put in i times i, so the square of i. So list y consists of the first five square numbers. We can append the number 36 to that list, and we can even extend the list with another list, by using the respective keywords. Python can also handle sets. To build a set, we can use the set keyword and the curly brackets. Like in math, sets contain each value at most once, so the set s does not store the value 1 twice. We can add or remove items from a set. If we add 4 to our original set and remove 2, we just end up with the values 1, 3, and 4 in our set. Dictionaries are a powerful concept closely related to sets. Instead of just having a set, each item in the set also has a value. We use the same curly brackets, with additional colons, to construct a dictionary. In our dictionary D, the items are actually strings with names. In a dictionary, the set of items are called keys. Each key has a value, in our example the age of the person. We can add a new item to the dictionary by just assigning the value to the dictionary entry, using the square brackets. We can operate on dictionaries, for instance we can print all keys or values of a dictionary. Depending on the condition of some variables, a program can execute different parts of our code. Like in most other programming languages, this is done with an if statement. In a condition, we can use logical functions such as and, or, or, not, and also round brackets. 
note that there is a colon at the end of the if statement. If the condition is true, then we print the string far. Python uses indentation to know which parts of the program need to be executed after the colon. In contrast to most other programming languages, the colon and the indentation is enough to specify the flow of the program. Python doesn't need curly brackets. If the condition is not true, we can check for another condition by using the Python keyword ELIF. In this ELIF case, two statements are indented. If all conditions fail, we go into the else branch of the execution. Python has a quirky specialty which is called conditional expression. In a conditional expression, the if statement follows another statement. In this example, we print hello but only if the condition in the following if statement is true. So we print hello if the variable x is 5. If x is not 5, we print the content of x. Apart from if statements, Python also supports loops. Python has two types of loops, one is the for loop. In this case, we iterate through all the items of a dictionary D. Now we have an indentation, so for each item, we iterate again. This time we use a range query to go through all the elements of a list L. The other loop type is a while loop. As long as the condition of the while loop is true, we continue executing all the indented lines. In this example, we execute the while loop as long as the variable x is strictly larger than 3. Like all modern programming languages, Python also supports functions. You can define a function by the keyword def, followed by a function name, the parameters of the function in round brackets, and a colon. The function definition is followed by the code of the function. The content of the function is of course indented, and in this case returns the square of the parameter x. Note that in Python you do not need to define the type of the parameters. Indeed this function can handle integer values and real values. If the programmer however calls this function with a string or a list, the Python program would throw an error at runtime, since the multiplication symbol is not defined for strings or lists. In Python, simple functions can also be defined in a single line by using the keyword lambda. This line defines the same square function as above, by directly defining input and output, separated by a colon. No matter which version of the function we call, we will get the same answer. Remember the list comprehension example from earlier? Now we want to sort that list, but in a peculiar way. This is a typical example for a lambda function. Here, we specify that we want to sort list L according to a special key, which is a lambda function. In fact, for each value v in the list, we are interested in the value v modulo 10. In other words, we want to sort the list according to the last digit of each value. So if we sort our list of five square numbers, we get the values sorted according to their last digit. You now know the main concepts of Python. Thanks for watching this video.